Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trofin at the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Gwentech. In this show we talk about interesting decks to play around with and today we're back in Syndicate and uh, we're going to show off a very uh, cool deck that kind of combines the benefits of Horde abilities using Hidden Cash as you can already see on the uh, screen right now because we're looking at the deck builder and the powerful uh, abilities of the bounty card. So we're gonna try and combine like um, point gaining engine cards with really devastating bounty takeouts. Uh, takeouts? Take down. Takeouts that's for when you want to eat something. Um, so as I said we're gonna be using hidden cash in this deck and we're quickly gonna go over all the cards. So hidden cash you gain three coins uh, every round, so every round you have the ability to get three coins. And all of your horde abilities require two less coins to trigger. A very powerful syndicate ability that allows you the flexibility of getting a bit more, uh, well, getting coins in the bank every uh, round in case you need them. And of course the hordes give you plenty of engine cards to work with. Um, since this deck is called the Passiflora Bounty deck, you might as well recognize which cards we're actually going to use. So of course, the Passiflora is the scenario of Syndicate, giving you, in uh, when you play it, a Passiflora Peaches. Passiflora Peaches, I might just check that out really quickly here as well. So it starts at 4 power and for Horde 2 in our deck, because we reduce that to 2. Uh, at the end of your turn, boost self by 1, so that's just a passive engine. After that you get 6 coins from the passive flora and after that if you play another blind dice you get another Sly Seductress. So and the Sly Seductress gives you an extra point whenever your opponent plays a unit or if there's two on the field whenever your opponent plays a card. So very strong passive engines that just keep you up top of, uh, on top of your opponent. Um, other than that, I'm just going to go through the engine cards first. So then we have Bincy. Nope, Bincy. There we go. If she's on the range throw, she actually boosts herself by the amount of coins you gain whenever you get coins. Uh, giving it basically making her the strongest engine in this deck, but of course very vulnerable. She's on the range throw. She's going to get uh, really, really powerful. So she has a high power that can be easily taken out by any uh, tall removal cards. Um, so that's why we also have Azar Java to give us those two scarabs that can defend um, our engines. Aside from that, we also have Lieutenant von Hurst, who also triggers on Horde 2 with Hidden Cash and just spawns a Fire Sworn Zealot in this row. We saw that in the New Religion deck a while back as well. Then Soul is the, well, you, you have to include Soul if you're going with uh, Hidden Cash. So he boosts himself depending on how many coins you have. So for us, that actually means if you have one coin, he boosts himself by one at the end of your turn. If you have four coins, he boosts himself by two. And if you have seven, he boosts himself by three at the end of your turn. Uh, Roderick is also a passive engine, giving you coins every uh, a coin at the end of every turn, or spawns a Flaming Rose Footman if you want to stop using that passive ability. And then aside from that, we also have the Sewer Raiders giving us a bit of tinning. Um, and then the Sea Jackal allowing us to, well, capitalize on the, po the coins that we're generating. So as long as we can stay above five coins or higher, we can trigger the Sea Jackal for two coins and get three points in return. So that's a really, really uh, good conversion method for coins. And then if all else fails, we also have the Street Urchins. Counts as Blind Eyes, so you can trigger Passive Flora with that, giving you a nice three coins. And of course, allowing you to spend those coins just one to one, giving you a point for every coin you spend. So that's basically the uh, boosting side of things. And now we're going to go back up, because of course, this is the Passive Flora Bounty deck. So we're going to be spending a lot of time destroying units and adding bounty statuses on them as well. The biggest one here is the Professor. So again, a Witcher 1 favorite. On deploy, he puts a bounty on an enemy unit and damages it by three uh, immediately. So possibly killing it and giving you coins in return because of the bounty that you apply. Um, which is really good. That's basically our uh, strongest simple damage dealer, although just combined with the bounty, it's a really, really good uh, tempo card. Then of course we have Morielse, giving you uh, 4 damage as a base, but if you spend 6 coins you just can basically destroy a unit. Combine that with a bounty and you get more 
basically all your coins back because that six tribute is usually worth it especially in this meta uh, where you usually have a high value target which is also the reason why we have Graydon. Graydon is the most risky card in this deck so on the ploy he can destroy an enemy unit if it has bounty so that's a big if and if you spend five more coins you can also boost Graydon by the amount of uh, well the base power of the unit you destroyed. Um, you need to be careful with Graydon because of course if you don't have any bounties on the field you just basically break Graydon. He's just three points and he can't do anything else. Uh, but that's something you'll have to keep in mind. So we have plenty of ways to add bounty which is of course also Caleb Menge's job. So he gives you three coins when you play him and then every turn you can place a bounty on an enemy unit. Making and uh, our strongest engine cards in the deck basically because you can just keep, in, uh, keep playing bounties and then you can get those coins back if you manage to destroy those units. On the topic of destroying units of course we have Horson's Freak Show. Horson's Freak Show does two damage for every two coins you spend on him. Uh, on them I should say because there's a, there are a group of clowns. Um, giving you a, a, a lot of flexibility in how you want to take out units. So especially focusing on those bounty units. And of course with bounty you can't well not go without the witch hunter execution also giving you two coins and giving you even more flexibility than Horson's Freak Show because he just uh, trades off damage for uh, one coin each so you can more precisely take out units so for example if there's an um, you gave an enemy unit that has an old power bounty you would be overspending with Horson's Freak Show because he can only damage by per two uh, but the Witch Hunter Executioner can just deal one damage every time. You can also use those coins regardless and just provide bleeding on enemy units, which is definitely a way to get rid of excess coins. And then of course, last but not least, we have Slander, uh, which has been nerfed a bit uh, a few a wh a while ago, if you've uh, not played Bounty in a while. So this used to be Profit 4, it has been reduced to Profit 3, but you also place a Bounty on an enemy unit, and combined if you have something like Horseman's Freak Show or the Witch Hunter Executioner on the field, you can just take that out immediately and capitalize that way. So a really versatile deck that both goes for damage and just recouping those coins and just benefiting from those coins with Horde abilities. Um, that's that, that's the deck composition. Uh, you can just copy it from here or from the Play Gwent website. There's, uh, the deck composition is of course available in the comment section as usual. So uh, with that done, let's head into an example match to see how strong this deck can be. And our first match of course is Northern Realms. That's gonna be interesting, so Inspired Zeal. So that's gonna be very interesting. So that's either gonna be Commandos, I'm guessing it's gonna be Commandos, but you might be able to do something here. Um, let's get rid of the slander. Um, we could protect Bincy. We have a slice seductress. We have Graydon as well, so we need those bounties. I think that's pretty much okay. Yeah, let's keep it like that. So let's just okay that. So we're not gonna get the Tiger's Eye. I put in Tiger's Eye instead of something like Crystal Skull because Tiger's Eye just gives you the flexibility of spending those coins whenever you want, giving you a bit of burst damage, um, especially in this deck. So, or just giving you a higher horde count uh, from the get-go. But this is gonna be very interesting. So we get Amphibious Assault first. And that is going to go, of course, into a ship. Is he going to protect that ship immediately with something else or not? Not just yet. Not just yet. Let's start slow. Um, we can get Lieutenant Von Hurst to basically give us the same engine capabilities. Um, and just activate Hidden Cash to get those three coins and generate those fire swords. Have you made your offering? by subscribing to this channel or liking it. Of course, I expect those boiling oils and just to bait those out. And that actually purifies the Fire Sworn Salad as well. Um, again, as I said, let's just start slow. The Slice Seductress is basically perfect to just generate some passive points. Okay, it's been a while since I played Syndicate with the uh, audio on, but yeah, that apparently tickled their tits. This is so gonna get demonetized. So the thing about Syndicate, it's always hard to pilot decks like these. 
Um, so that is boost three adjacent allies, so that's going to include himself. That is fine. I think I probably should... Hmm. So the base power of the boat is probably just four, right? So that's four, yeah. So I won't get any benefit from using Graydon on that. But Sol is going to only boost himself by one, so that's not really useful. I could just put... Yeah, I'm just going to put some thinning on the board. So we're still not that far behind. We have an almost similar engine, so we get one point, they get uh, two every turn. And then we get on Aha! Uh -huh. So there's Roach, so there we go, Commandos. Commandos are going to get Zeal, and then they're going to pull those Commandos out of the board. There we go. That was to be expected, and that's, of course... Hmm... I don't think I'm going to be able to overcome that really quickly. So I probably should just... Because I can't take all of them out. I sh yeah, I'm going to save my engines for the last round. So I'm just going to use uh, Slander on the boat. Just to at least take away one of his engines. So there we go, we get the blue stripe scouts. And now, of course, that's really annoying. Because that means that every scout actually gives him 8 points. I think it's probably not even worth it going further now. I'm just gonna pass. Because this is going a bit too quickly to my tastes. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Commandos suck to play against. Because that's just basically 8 points every turn. And they can pull them back with uh, Pavetta. That's good, that at least gives us the bounties that we need. Um, I'd like to get Passiflora in our hands rather quickly. So Morils is going to be interesting to just use to take out a commando if I need to. But of course with Inspired Zeal you can just pull them out whenever he wants to. Uh, let's get rid of the Slander. That's actually not too bad. No, let's keep it like that. So if we... I think what's going to happen is he's, they're going to push. Yeah, there we go. Um... Okay, so let's just put Roderick up there. And then that's gonna... that's not gonna push us over, but... But, but, but... What are they gonna do? Are they gonna push or not? And it all depends on that. If they push now, then I might have a chance. Are you really gonna do that? So that's going to pull one of the commandos, and then they're going to pull every single one of those. Okay. To the enemy. Inspired Teal, I'm pulling them all out again. Yeah, let's put Bincy on the field, because that's just a really quick engine card. And let's do that. I should probably just go for the bounties now, because I'm going to have to spend the bounty. So there's a 9 point, point card over there as well. So I need 15 points, uh, 16 points to go over that. So I think I can do that with Morelse. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna play it like that. Okay, fine. Fine. So let's start with Caleb Menge. Uh, and place. Oh, I, I keep having that bug that I can't really assign um, them immediately. So that gives us that. We're gonna get six extra coins from the from Bincy. Well, six coins from using the. Um, I'm gonna use Great Next. That's what I want to say. God damn! Get out of your words, Finny. Okay, so now we're gonna use Graydon uh, just to avoid that we brick him. There's not gonna be much else. Um, well, many stronger units with a high base power like that. So let's just take out Pavetta. Uh, that gives us six coins, and we can bounty... Might as well bounty the ship again. Uh, let's just bounty the ship over here. Um, I could push us over, but it's just more fun to just get the points and the points. If there's a bloody Baron in there, then I might be boned. 
I think I might as well, ooh, I might have just waited just not, I might have done this too quickly. Because if I now use Azar Java, I get the three points from the coins, I should be over. And have plenty of good cards after that. Spawn and play a base copy, so that's another boat. Okay, that takes, takes them a while, there we go. Let's put that frigate over there. And get rid of everything. The problem is that if they have a way of getting Pavetta back again, uh, I'm gonna get hit by the commandos once again, and that's not good. So, um, oh, this is risky. Because if it has Bloody Baron, I should probably just go for the safe bet first. Uh, do this. So it's protected. Uh, we have the coin generation and the point generation to keep that going. So I think we should be fine. We're not going to get hit by a Bloody Baron just yet. Because I just want to avoid that. Them boosting all units. That's fine. That is fine. So now we just have enough to actually put the executioner down. And just not lose any coins. And then we can just hit the boat for six. There we go, and then we have... Ah, uh, I do need to be careful. I know the boat probably has another... Yeah, I'm just gonna hit the boat with some... Bleeding here. I'm gonna actually hit a few of them with bleeding, because I feel like they all have... Yeah, let's just keep it at five, because then that gives us three coins in the next round. There we go, that goes up to six. The reason why I'm not using Caleb Menge again is, well, one, I lose three coins, and uh, two, I can use a Professor to apply another bounty. I can still use Morelsa to get rid of that now 11-point Commando, um, which is just better than not using the, the Tribute ability. But right now we're ahead and we have one card extra, so that would be really nice if we can keep it that way. As long as they don't remove either well we have a nice just cycle going here he's they're gonna keep going another on aeromancy and that gives us who that's a that's a nice one so that's gonna be what 13 yeah now voimir has the higher base but then the ship just has the most potential so i'm just gonna use yeah the professor oh um, uh, it's not worth the tribute the tribute is rarely worth it and let's put that on the boat and then we can get two more hits on that that gives us four more coins back uh and that's gonna be it i think although I'm, i am gonna put one more bleeding on the commando but you know voimir because voimir has the more interesting goodies okay so there we go that's six points ahead there we go we got a pass so now we have eight points in the back. We're gonna get four in the next round. Plus hidden cash, which means that we can use uh, soul immediately. So that's good. Now the question is, do they have the ability to pull Pavetta back? I would assume so. They probably have renew. So renew means they can put, use Pavetta again. So we have two blind eyes and pass the floor. That's basically a perfect draw. That is a perfect draw. Wow. Yeah, I don't need to do... I mean, I have a few other fancy cards in here, although I think... Yeah, the only thing would be Freak Show, but I'd spend all the bounties I would want. So no, that's... That's just basically really, really good. There we go. Yeah. Okay, now the... We have four coins. Which means that I should probably play the... I'm gonna lose coins quickly so let's put oof. i'm gonna put soul first right the soul's hoard is worth more so that's gonna go up to six immediately i'm not using the three coins from hidden cash just yet because i'm gonna go overboard anyway um i think yeah there's Pavetta, so that's what we what we were thinking before. 
So, I'm actually thinking I should probably use the street urchins first. Um, because... Yeah, I'm not gonna get another chance at spending those, because I'm gonna get six coins from the passive flora. So, otherwise they're gonna go to waste. I'm gonna lose four coins aside from... Hmm... Hmm... No, let's just go for it. Because um, I'm thinking the I'm gonna lose four coins, but that's not no. I'm gonna I'm not gonna get that back. Um, yeah, use the sweet urchins first. Um, so I'm gonna have to use spend those over here, and that's gonna be it. Ah, if he has another boiling oil, I'm gonna be so annoyed. So there we go, we get another commando, and if he... Yeah, he's gonna use Inspired Seal on that. That is... Commando! So that's 20 points. That's not too bad, actually. So now we get past the Flora. Um, and then I'm gonna use the Hidden... Yeah, Hidden Cash. So we get an extra point on... Soul. Play a bronze unit, so that's probably gonna be the scout, yeah, because again, that's eight points. I think we got this. I think we got this. Uh, so now I need to count. So I'm gonna get six coins. So I need to spend uh, four on uh, the street urchins, then play the passive floor of each, so we're back up to max. And then we're gonna spend two more just to make sure that we have the most efficient board usage here. So there we go. So that's five points every turn. And yeah, we got this. There we go. And that is the power of using both the uh, hidden cash benefits and passive flora and bounty in the same deck. So you have that really, really strong control with the bounties and you can get those coins back and just keep going and then of course the engines from the uh, the passive flora and all the blind eyes that we uh, just use in that final round to even overtake the very strong commando deck so uh, there we go that was a very good example match and to end off my babbling here a little bit uh, we're gonna take one last look at the passive flora bounty deck so uh, again Tiger's Eye, we haven't seen that here. I use Tiger's Eye instead of the Crystal Skull because that gives you way more flexibility. And if you want to go for four coins with the Tiger's Eye or three coins with Hidden Cash and then just spend them or just benefit from a very high um, horde abilities from the get-go. Because, for example, with Tiger's Eye and Hidden Cash, you can just trigger Soul immediately because you get to seven coins even at your first turn. So you can get going really, really strong if you want to. Um, but other than that, yeah, just this, I think it's a perfect mi mix of just having engine cards with the bounty and control options, um, and even a little bit of tinning with the sewer radius. So yeah, just try it out for yourself. Let me know what you think. And uh, that's it for today's episode of Gwent Edge. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you, again, if you want to check out the deck, it's in the deck, this in the the comments in the description of this video down below and um, yeah just let me know what you think if you see any points to improve as well that's going to be really really interesting for me too and uh, yeah I just want to scroll down the deck list again so you can see um, if you're interested in more, I have plenty more deck, uh, deck guides in the channel right now. So, uh, for example, the last one we did was on another Assimilate deck with Angoulême. Not the most competitive deck, but it's really, really fun if you can pull off some of its wilder combos. We also have a Monsters deck that uses uh, Frost to its full advantage. Uh, or, of course, the very classic, uh, by now, classic, uh, classic Nature's Gift um, Dryad deck. Uh, which is really really strong as well so uh, hope you guys enjoyed it and if you did don't forget to leave a like and you can also talk to me on twitter at at trophynut that's t-r-o-v-n-u-t and uh yeah thank you guys so much for watching i hope to see you in the next episode of gwendage goodbye thanks for watching